All right. Hello and welcome to the Game Brew Podcast. Episode. Uh, hello and welcome. <laughs> God, <take it. laughs> episode. 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 Podcast episode 004, where we'll be discussing things that games need to stop doing and gaming heartbreaks. But first, gentlemen, it's about time to have a beer, shall we? My cap went <laughs> flying. <laughs> Somebody's stuck. There were some noises. You're supposed to use an opener. I did use an opener. Cheers. I used, an opener. I used my teeth. Oh, that's hot. Hmm? Thanks. What yeah. are we drinking this week, gentlemen? Several things. A lot of different things. Yeah. yeah. We are, we, we we are within with... one company. One, yes. One, one, one brew brewer. town, home brewer. Yeah. Yeah, one brew. They're not a home brewer. Um, so this week we're doing something a little bit different. We're sort of doing a new Belgium grab bag. So we've got a bunch of, I should say, three different beers from the new Belgium brewers. Uh, I am drinking the new Belgium juicy watermelon. Mm. And Will Shell is drinking the. I'm drinking 1554, but uh, before uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, you dropped your man card at the grocery store, Mister Watermelon. <laughs> yeah, no. There's nothing what I wrong like with about watermelon. this beer is that it's um, it's a nice, you know, easy on the easy on the palate ale, but it's also a great stripper name. Yeah. <laughs> Juicy. True. Next on the poll, <laughs> juicy well, watermelon. In a, in a way, so is Whizbang. Whiz yeah, bang. I've got fifteen fifty four. name too. Yeah. Fifteen fifty four, not so much. Um. So Ooh. so it is a, it is a fruit beer. There is fruit in this. One thing that I don't uh I don't like is when fruit beers have fruit that's super overpowering. And the nice thing about this is that it's not. It's uh it's there. You can taste it. But really, it's a super a super light ale. It's great. Super cold. Maybe on the beach or sitting under a an umbrella of some sort in the sunshine would be nice. I'm liking my uh, 1554. It's very black lager e, as the title says here at the bottom of the label. And I mean, it's what you would expect from a dark lager. It's good. It's full bodied. I don't know how much my opinion, how much weight my opinion carries at the moment because uh, I'm sick with a fever of 101, and I've had my Nyquil and my hot whiskey with honey and lemon. So, uh, and yeah, so Will's it's mixing good. his downers with his downers this evening. Yeah, always a good it's decision. Be good. But I am drinking the same thing, so I can give you a uh, slightly more tasted, tasting, tasty definition of the beer. Um, it is really chocolatey. Like that's one of the one of the things about black lagers. Like you can really taste the chocolate finish on it. Will can't taste anything. But I can taste it. No, I cannot. Finish. It's pretty good. The bubbles are good. <laughs> yeah, the bubbles. The bubbles. And then I've got Whiz Bang. It's a hoppy blonde ale. And I, I mean, let me grab another sip real quick. So it's um, it's not it's it's much more flavorful than you than a wheat beer, but has a really nice hoppy finish. Not as much as an IPA, but it's still pretty good. Um. A good summer beer, um, kind of I guess maybe like that watermelon beer, but but not not as sweet I'm sure. Um, but yeah, overall it's a it's a nice refreshing beer. Yeah, I'm surprised actually that the 1554 is pretty widely released at the moment because it's we're approaching the warm times of the year. And I well, feel like a lager uh, a lager is not going to be as heavy as an ale. Right. Yeah, so right. it's a bit lighter than than. Um, like a dark ale or a brown ale, but but definitely mm-hmm. heavier than like a yingling. I'm just saying, like, yeah, when I sit down to flip some burgers and have some dogs with my bros on the beach, I'm not reaching for the black lager as my first go around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it's a, it's true. a lot more it's a lot more towards like a porter or a stout than it is anything else because of that like chocolatey coffee finish I would, that it I would has, say a, but it's much lighter. I don't know. I feel like Goose and Maverick could have reached in the cooler for a nice black lager before the beach volleyball scene. Goose doesn't mm-hmm. reach for anything anymore, Will. God. Is that before? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Before. Top Gun spoilers, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I feel like he's alive. Uh, that's a happy moment. Oh, it is. Sometimes. And they're all flexing the whole time. How and yeah. sunglasses, do of course. That? Anyway. How do you- <laughs> 
do it. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about what we've been playing this week. Uh, Chris, if you want to start us off, this is a game I've been super interested in, but I don't own a PS4, so sad times. Right, so this is a, a really new game, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I have to say that I was very excited for this for a long time, and in some ways it really lives up to the hype, in other ways it does not. Oh, um, it's Ooh. a very pretty game. It's probably one of the mm. best looking, if not the best looking game on PS4 out there. So they did a really great job with that. And I know they've gotten a lot of compliments from, um, I think Naughty Dog complimented them, which is a big compliment considering they've done Uncharted and, and The Last of Us. Um, but the thing that I have with it is that it doesn't do anything new. Like it, it's it's not really going into new territory it's not really trying anything new but it does a really great job at the open world kind of far cry formula um you know one of the things that always bothered me about the far cries is that you know in in far cry 3 the story like super went off the rails at the end wasn't wasn't really my kind of thing and then in far cry 4 it just was completely disinteresting does sure. the does the story in Horizon Zero Dawn stick together in a way that the Far Cry games don't? Definitely, so far it has. I've I've invested about I think ten hours into it, and it it so far it definitely has a much better story than the Far Cries, and it definitely has a much more interesting world than the Far Cries for sure. Mm. It's a post apocalyptic Earth basically, um, where there are cybernetic animals that you're basically hunting in addition to normal animals. Um, so it's, it's definitely a much more interesting setting, but it, it definitely is kind of a maturation of that open world formula. And, and the dinosaur hunting, is that your favorite part? Because I feel like that would be my favorite part. Seriously. How's the combat yes no. with that The combat's though. really great. Um, so one of the things I really like about it, and I think it's, is my favorite part is the creativity that you can have. So you get a ton, like basically once you get out of the tutorial area, you kind of get access to a ton of different weapons and each different weapon has a different play style. Um, your main weapon is like this fast firing bow and that's kind of like your, your main tool, but you can use whatever you want with like, there's a shotgun kind of crossbow type thing. There's slingshots that shoot grenades that have different payloads there's traps that you can put down there's things that you can tie the dinosaur robots down with and that kind of thing you can you can tie me kangaroo down yes well you could tie me robo kangaroo down <laughs> i feel like i should get that reference i Sing don't. more children's songs oh okay. you'll, you'll get it you'll get it <laughs> oh i'm sorry <laughs> But it, and that's one of the things I really liked about Breath of the Wild too is that they allow you to get creative with the tools they give you. Are you um are you completely overwhelmed by open world stuff? Seeing that you're playing Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn at the same time. Um, not overwhelmed. I I kind of so I I play Horizon Zero Dawn at my girlfriend's place, and she I have my uh, PS4 over there, and then. My Wii U's over at my place, so I, I kind of have it separated <laughs> like that. Yeah. If that That's makes nice. sense. That's yeah. nice. So cool. it's shared custody with the uh, shared custody with the consoles, then. Then. Right. Exactly. It gives me an excuse to to go over to her place. <laughs> nice. Nice. Dan. I hope Dan, she listens to that. You've been uh, breaking out your hoe and getting some work done lately. Yeah, man. I get I get done my day of work. I come home and I do some more work. It's great. <laughs> I come out. I play some Stardew Valley. Man, it's addictive. I it really didn't is. think it would be as addictive as it is, but it's it's really fun just to plan out it's like okay i gotta go to the store and get some seeds and plant those seeds water those seeds then i'll spend the rest of the day mining and then uh maybe soon it'll be summer and i'll be able to plant some summer crops uh hopefully my beans come in soon because it's going to be summer soon and those are spring so oh boy um (laughs) never in gaming has there been so much uh expectation of beans sprouting hey hey you gotta wait for those beans to sprout man Gotta wait for the beans to sprout. I also went to visit uh, my friend Sasha in um, in Washington D.C. and we got drunk on wine and played uh, We Love Katamari for Fuck. a good like three hours. 
So with can you, her roommate, can you Jack. explain what the conceit of the Katamari games is? That's where you roll up the world, right? Oh my it's God, you roll up Katamari. the world. You roll up everything. It's yeah. there's there couldn't be anything simpler. Um, the the theme song is probably the best part because it goes na 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 <laughs> Katamari Damacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Dude, that game is so good. I remember a very catchy theme song. Didn't that originally come out on, was it PS1? I remember playing that two. at LAN two. parties way back in the day. Two. PS2. Yeah. I yeah, played that a bunch came... in college with my roommate, Jono. Uh, yeah. And, it's... And, so I've only ever watched YouTube videos of this game, but why is it fun? Because it's just, I don't know. It's this whole <laughs> mentality of just... You you start rolling up things that are bigger and then bigger and then Dan's bigger, right. And it's, it's very like, satisfying. It's just like it it's is. once you get to the point where it's like you're rolling up like little thumbtacks, but then like eventually you're like, oh, I rolled up a cat. Yeah, I rolled up a cat. <laughs> it's super it's satisfying just, being able to roll over stuff that you couldn't roll over at the beginning. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just two minute long, like. Is like immediate gratification. It's the Got best it. part about it. What was as that, a person? Oh, I was gonna say, as a person who absolutely hates boring, pointless games where you grow, I don't know, fucking corn, and you use your hoe in the garden, <laughs> and Wait, fucking you corn? try to don't starve. What's corn? Um, Dan's right. It, there's something really oddly satisfying about a mindless, dull game where you just you're a ball and you just roll stuff up. It's so satisfying when you get like a cow or a skyscraper. It's fun. Oh man, yeah. I rolled up earth. I did that. Yes. I did that. It was a thing. So so uh will, you know, uh I know you haven't been playing any Katamari because you've been busy this week, but you have been playing some Overwatch. Do you have any updates for us there? Um yes, I've been playing the new Overwatch uh PvE mode, uh Uprising. And I love it when I get a group of people who understand what the fuck is going on. And what to do. I abs- The amount of times that I have just backed out of a game and left my party abandoned because of stupid people in that is... I don't do that. And I've done that constantly with this. I don't know why, but I find myself so frustrated. It's it's a game with a goal. It's, it's a short burst. It's, you know, 10, 20 minutes long. And I've researched so, it. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, can you... Sorry, can you tell... So, for the audience who may or may not have Overwatch... <laughs> Um, what what is the uprising event? What is that PVE thing that you're talking well, about? Well, first Overwatch of all, go buy Overwatch. PVP normally, right? Yeah, yeah, normally. Uh, first of all, go buy Overwatch. Second of all, uh, so you play on a team of four people, and your heroes are limited in the primary mode, and you can only use those four characters abilities of course and you have to work as a team and you have to very much understand the mechanics of each of those characters and how they play off one another and each of their strengths and weaknesses not just the character you're playing you have to be aware of all of them so i've spent a lot of time researching all these other characters that i don't play very often and learn some great strategies and ways to be successful with it and i get so frustrated when other people don't do that because it's not an easy mode it's yeah. hard as yeah. balls you don't need to be playing that on veteran or expert unless you've done some research and it just pisses so, me off it's fun yeah. but it pisses me off the conceit of the mode is essentially a um it's multiple point capture with uh di- waves of enemies coming in and of varying types and it is really hard i would dan and uh dan and alex and chris and i were playing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and we were playing on veteran i think we booted up normal first and just kind of you know had a had a chuckle and we booted up veteran and immediately got crushed because it's like no because no, like just because can't. alex hasn't played as much overwatch as the rest of us and and there was no way we were gonna get through it with uh, even one weak player well honestly i don't even think it was just alex um it's I'm just not, flat out hard i'm not gonna say that he was the Ooh. only problem just because he's not here um i will did... i'll do that <laughs> an asshole <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're right. It's the level of difficulty as you progress. The middle part actually is the most difficult. I think the end is not that bad if you know how to do it. But yeah, it's it's just balls to the wall heart, and you have to know what you're doing, and you have to communicate. It's not a thing where you can just not talk. You need to be on the microphone, and you need to know what each character is supposed to do. Okay. Sure. Do you cool. know if uh, if that's going to be a permanent mode or is that just uh, a, May first? Oh, no, it's just a limited time. That's unfortunate. It's until May 1st, and then it goes bye-bye. 
Yeah, yeah although they... although Blizzard does have a good history with Overwatch with um, adding different modes and keeping things that people like, so I wouldn't be surprised if in some time in the future you saw a permanent PVE mode um, yeah. happening. Because personally, had, I would like that. Arcade, yeah. So it's I, I it's very refreshing to have a change. You're you're absolutely right. I like it too. Because because I remember I remember um, during Halloween they kind of had a similar thing. It was kind of more of like a a horde mode defense type thing, um, and that was a lot of fun too. But I'm I was sad when it left. Yeah. 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 So uh, the- oh sorry. Sorry. No, never mind. I was gonna say um, uh, this week I've been playing some of a game called Event Open Bracket Zero Close Bracket. Uh, uh, I've heard about it. Has this. anybody else played this game? No. I've heard Details, about it, but I can't please. remember where I heard about it. So this is a, uh, a walking simulator, as they're known, um, similar to kind of a Firewatch or a Gone Home. And the conceit of a game is that you're stranded in space until you come upon this floating ship, and <gasps> you get on the ship, and... Surprise! Everything's aliens? gone wrong. No, actually, no aliens. Oh. So, so the main. I'm interested. The only way in this game that you interact with anything on the whole ship is that there's this little like it looks like a Compi 286, and you type <gasps> it, and you ask it questions. And you say, uh, "How do I open this door?" And it'll say, "Like, well, you ask me to open the door, and then I open it, and then you're like, can you please open this door for me?'" And it's like, "Yeah, I guess I could." But first, you have to prove to me that you know, like you're a human, or you want to do this thing that I want you to do. So you're you're interfacing with this AI to try to get it to do what you want to do because it's the only way that you can change anything in the game. Which is, it, is that like a 2001 Space Odyssey? Like I can't do that. Yes, I can't I'm do sorry. that, Ian. I can't do that, Ian. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it it does have some of that kind of thing going on because the computer is not always helpful, and in fact, sometimes it kind of tries to kill you a little bit. Um, but it's it's just a little bit. It's well done in that the interaction with the computer feels uh, frustrating enough that you have to problem solve, but not so frustrating that I ever really felt stuck. Um, and, and it's pretty convincing in terms of like a Turing test kind of question. It's the computer's smart enough to get around, but but I, I felt when I was asking it questions that I could get to the edge of where the programmers had uh, uh, a thought through with this computer and it would sort of give you an answer that bumped you back to the normal stuff. So it was a cool cool game. Um, Interesting. Probably, probably four or five hours first run nice. through. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it, but that's also something that I'm coming to appreciate. Um, games that you can sort of play all the way through in a single bite or two. I am too. It's kind of like it's kind of like a short story. You don't need yeah. to you don't need to invest a a twelve hundred page book worth of time into a into oh. a video game. You can a Witcher three amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, a, an excellent four to five hours is so much more enjoyable than a mediocre thirty for sure. Yeah, uh, did you get that in the humble bundle? I did get it in the humble bundle. Humble bundle. Humble How you? What do you think of this this last humble bundle? Oh, off um, topic, but aside from this event zero, I haven't played anything, so can't say. Um, I've played a little bit of the witness. That was pretty neat. The witness. Uh, yeah. Oh, was the witness in that one? Yeah, the dude, witness twelve bucks free. for the witness. Shucks. Uh, yeah, not, go I'm not too do excited that. about the newest one. The newest Temple Bundle. It's uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna pass on it. I think I'm I, gonna pass. Yeah, I need because I mean, dirt. I mean, I've heard Inside is good. That's the same people that did Limbo. Inside, if Inside is in that humble bundle, everybody listening, Game Brew, go get and play Inside because it's it's one of the best games that I've played in the past couple of years. It is absolutely one percent worth your time and your thoughts for that game. Okay, well, Inside need, is on humble bundle for twelve dollars so, so with go Dirt go. Rally. Don't know. Really have an opinion on Dirt Rally, but inside, apparently, yeah, inside, outstanding. So that's what we've been playing this week. Um, so I want to move next into our segment one topic, which is things that games need to stop doing. There's uh, things that range from tiny niggling details to huge concepts that we have in this list. But the idea is we play games because we want to enjoy them, and sometimes things get in the way of that enjoyment. So what is it? 
that we think games need to stop doing. And I want to go to Dan because uh, I think Dan's got some really excellent <laughs> examples here. Dan, what do you what do you uh, think that games need to stop doing? I'm so tired of quick time events. Like, just sometimes it's just let me watch the cutscene. I want to know what happens. I don't want to sit there holding my finger above the A button, just being like, "Oh, it's gonna happen. Oh, is it gonna happen?" Oh, it's gonna! I'm dead. I gotta start the whole cutscene over from the beginning. And I know there's people. There are people out there who are like, "Oh no, it adds to the game." It does in some occasions. I will agree with you. Um, like there are, like for instance, uh, let's just take a look at like God of War. God of War doesn't really have those were really good games. PlayStation. Um, mm-hmm. I love them a lot. Because it puts the quick time events as part of the story, like it's happening while you're playing. So there's not really any cutscenes. There are some, but most of the story happens in the game through those quick time events, which is a really good way of doing that. Um, but but there are some games that try to do that that don't do so well. Um, they're uh, like, did you, yes, like uh, yeah, Ian. No, 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 I was doing the. Oh, you were stretching. Oh, you were. Oh, you. Oh, okay. So there's one that I was showing Ian earlier, which is uh, what was that? Armored. I think it was uh, Ace Combat. Ace Combat, where at the end you can like it's the last cutscene in the whole game, and like you step out of your plane, your girlfriend comes and is like, "You did it! You're about to you you save the world!" Blah blah blah. And then it says, "Press triangle." You look at your fist, you clench it, and it says, "Press triangle," and all you do is you lift your fist up in the air. And, and, Ace, and you... Ace Combat, the the flight simulate, like the flight combat game. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah. There's yeah. no reason it's... for that to be there. Yeah. There's <laughs> or like in a or in a, what's it called in Call of Duty? Whenever uh, Advanced Warfare, where you're at your buddy's funeral and it says, you know, go up and press, press X press F to, to pay, pay respects. Press F to pay <laughs> respects. Yeah, those are stupid. It's just like. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you put that in there? Just make it a cutscene. It doesn't make any sense to do that. Yeah. Then, but that's and that's kind of like the opposite of what people want that to be. Um, there are the other ones that are good, like God of War, that incorporate things into the story. Are like that Resident Evil. Sometimes does it the right way. Resident Evil Four had some okay things aside from the scenes where you have to stupidly run away from boulders for nine hours, <laughs> and then if you die, you got to start over at the beginning of running away from boulders. And I want to kill myself, but the uh, with the boulders um, and the but like Resident Evil Five, it was even worse. They were just throwing, just throwing. <clears throat> Like quick time events, like oh press A now, press A yeah. now. Yeah. Resident Evil Six. I feel like I yeah, feel like it was I, the worst. I, I feel like quick time events have actually really pared down since you know the aughts, since the aught years. That would be mm. aught aught zero zero through ten. There haven't really been that many games that lean too heavily on quick time events since then. So I feel like Uncharted made them like one of the games that kind of made them cool was Uncharted and Tomb Raider. And in some ways, those work because a lot of in a lot of ways, those games are like interactive movies in a way. If that makes yeah. sense. See, I yeah. feel like the Telltale yeah. games did a better job with that than the Naughty Dog. That's that's interesting because the well, Telltale games are essentially only quick time yeah. events with stories. But they're so them, yeah. well integrated; they belong, and it's normal. It doesn't feel out of place ever. Yeah. But that's also when it makes sense is whenever you have yeah. something that's it's the whole game. Uh, right. The first game to use quick time events was Dragon's Lair, which was entirely quick time events. Like there is not it was basically just a movie where you press buttons like in a sequence that gets you to go places. So right. that's kind of like widely accepted as like, oh, it was entirely quick time events. But a game that is a first person shooter or something that's really input heavy, it it's, doesn't make like, sense why? to break you out of why? doing right. those things that are great to make you push a button for no particular reason. Yeah. That's, so it's like, right. that's, that's interesting. And, and it's interesting you bring that up too, like that quick time events can be a positive thing because I was thinking that you, you guys remember the Force Unleashed games? Yeah. 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 I love those games and they're so quick time heavy. But like, also well, pulling a star destroyer out of the sky 
should be a pretty taxing event. Well, so I think the okay quick time events they were ingrained very times. well. They were incorporated excellently. They did not feel out of place at all. And I think that goes back to what Dan says is if you're going to do it, it's got to feel like a natural part of the environment that you're in. It can't be very out of place. Yeah. Right. And that's what I liked about. So uh, Dan's example, one of his examples of good games was God of War. I thought that, that it worked really well because a lot of the time it was when you were fighting a boss or like, like kind of like finishing off a boss. And um, I think it worked that way with Darksiders. Same thing with Force Unleashed. It was just while you it was in the moment and it felt right. Yeah. Uh, so quick time events, there's there's the dark side and the light side, if you will. Will, sure. I want to go to you next, uh, because you have a pretty controversial thing that you want to stop games from doing, uh, and I'll just let you say it. I do. Some of my some of my beliefs, I feel like the the angry, racist, yeah, every, stereotypical every, Southern guy on the front well, porch. Well, I was I was gonna say everybody get your hate mail ready, ready and. Oh, I'm gonna to have to read so much of this. Open world games. You think they and should I'm stop doing open world? Games. I don't think Explain. they should stop doing them. I think that they're. I like them, but it feels like everyone's trying to do some sort of open world component. And I know it's not everyone. We've got a lot of great indie games and whatnot, but everything is open world. I mean, what happened to the days where you knew how to tell a story and keep people interested and you could just take me from A to B to C straight through to Z and I had a blast on the roller coaster ride the whole time. I didn't get to get off on the roller coaster and look around. I just sat my ass down, strapped in, and I was on for the ride and goddamn, it was fun. I don't... Give I don't, me the example. Give me the I don't want to get distracted like with all this shit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it goes... And let me explain my concept of open world before I start giving examples because I attribute open world to things that may or may not actually be open world, but that's how they feel to me. <laughs> Such as Minecraft is very open world. We know I don't like that's, Minecraft. Not okay. really. Open. Don't I mean, yeah, Starve open. is very yeah. sandboxy. I call it open world because the world is open and you can explore it. Okay. And I hate so, you know, and that's part of that's part, that's a whole other story. It's part of why I, I I don't like that Final Fantasy fifteen, which I've started. I like, but I don't love yet because the beginning is so open world heavy. I keep getting distracted by what I'm doing. I want to focus on the story, and I could, but you miss out on so many different, you know, gameplay you know aspects and need equipment that you can get by not doing that and that has its place it's just there's a lot of distractions that take me away from the things i enjoy so well i i i see what you're saying but i don't think i don't know if open world is the right way to describe it because i kind of agree with you i don't like a lot of the minecraft like games I don't. I like Minecraft. All right, it's fine. It's. I've. I spent a lot of time with it back in the day, but like, I don't like a lot of the games like that. And it's just because there's not a lot to it. It's. It's a lot of mile wide and a foot deep kind of thing. Like it's just. Whoa, 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 mm -hmm. whoa! I, I, I'm gonna push back a little bit on Minecraft being a mile wide and a foot deep because there are only so many. I mean, you can dig down a lot. Like yeah, there. you can <laughs> dig down way deeper than a foot on that. There, so there, there are only a few real no. systems in minecraft but the way that those systems interact lead to a huge variety of things that you could do and i would also point out that with like the redstone programming stuff the people have done insane things with Minecraft. no no i agree and i i don't consider minecraft as one of those games that does like i just there's a lot of games like i and i'm probably also gonna get a lot of hate for this too like there's just a lot of games that are minecraft like that don't do a great job of of being a very interesting game to me mm -hmm. like well, and and a lot of them a lot of them get stuck in like steam alpha and they don't get past that because like they they create a world and they're like okay we're done we created this really big world and it's just there's nothing there go do stuff like mm -hmm. Ian, I know you've really liked Astroneer. When was the last time you really dug into it? What is there to do in that game really past... I mean, I'm waiting for more content for that game. That that, that game has actually released more content, so you should go check it out. But I'm I actually going to pop over to Dan because he's been waiting here for a minute. 
Yeah, because I just want to, I want to actually jump on the Will's side here, uh, because, uh, yes, celebrate. Uh, because, and not entirely, like, I still, I do like some open world games, because I've expressed before my desire to, you know, go collect mushrooms and mm-hmm. uh, and slay 20 uh, corpse demons. Um, but, you know, sometimes whenever it's like, oh, your objective's on the other side of the world, you have to go from here to there. It gets kind of tedious when I have to go, like, that's a really long way. Can I just, like, can't the next part of the story just be the next thing instead of me having to do all this stuff in between it? Because that would be really better. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Will. I think that, to put it simply and in, in my frustrations with it, it has to be done really well and it has to be engaging. And I think the masters at this are Rockstar. Rockstar open world games... I don't get bored with it. there's so many stimuli and so much going on and so much to do that's engaging. It's not just bland menial things going on in the background while I'm driving from yeah. A to B. It's got to be done well and it can't just be filler and it too often feels like filler. Feels like yeah, it feels I think that's it, it feels like a real world. Yeah. What will will are there a particular series of games or a particular game that you think is really guilty of having an empty open world? Uh, that's not that's not a survival game because Minecraft and Astroneer those are those are kind of a different genre but actual open worlds like Assassin's Creed yeah I feel like that, um, that's actually exactly what I was going to say is I feel like Assassin's Creed is a lot of filler I had fun with it but it got so boring so quickly there's just a lot of filler and running around doing exactly the same thing it was not engaging after you got it down speaking of Assassin's Creed doing things we don't like Chris what's your what's your pet peeve bad tutorials Man, I hate a bad tutorial. When you know it's a tutorial and you know like it just doesn't really have... So tutorials are super hard to do in a game. You can have a tutorial that tries to be part of the game, but is just so obvious that it's a tutorial and like it doesn't like really bring you in at all. Like It feels like interns wrote it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the Dark Souls <laughs> games are particularly uh, guilty of this, where they like do this right now and no. then you do it and so, they explain so everything I, so perfectly in those games so what the fuck are so you talking about? in the souls games so i will double tap z to do a barrel roll fox <laughs> i i will argue that the souls games might do this on purpose because that's they're true. trying to teach you that you just need to go out and learn like, I, well if if that's the case then they just like just, school they should just like publish a manual with the game and then not say anything about it i think oh 90 style yeah, I think what bothers me about the Souls games is that there is a tutorial in there. It's just super shitty. Like, yeah. just don't. If you don't care about it and you want people to learn, that's fine. I'm good with that. But but then just don't put a tutorial in. Let there be key bindings, and we'll go from there. Right, and and th- that's like the the really hard thing to do. And like my other example is there's the Assassins games where you basically have almost a six hour tutorial a lot of the time. Like one of the one of the really bad like bad examples is is assassin's creed revelations i remember being playing that game for like a pretty large amount of time and still like learning how to drop bombs or smoke grenades or whatever to run away from guards like a decent amount of time in the game and it's just like it's it didn't feel like it was it was it felt like it was something i should know rather than i was getting new equipment right right yeah um that's interesting that's interesting. Do you guys have any examples of of really bad tutorials, Dan? I'm, I mean, I just get, I mean, I get fed up with like talking about Call of Duty again. The amount of times I had to go to training camp and like or like <laughs> shoot glass bottles. I'm like, I get it. We don't like glass bottles. Oh, I'm tired of, Army of shooting of two. them. <laughs> Army of Two, when you have to like go through the training camp and oh my stuff. gosh, like, it's oh. like, can I just can I just play games or did any of you guys play um? And you guys play uh, Evolve at all? No. Uh, I might have a little. Oh, so no, Evolve, I played Prototype, Evolve which was, was very. The, Evolve was oh. the, the Valve um, class based asymmetrical uh, team shooter. Yeah, it yeah. was it was where yeah, it's yeah. like you're a monster versus four other humans who are other things. Um, right. You can't even play the game without doing the tutorial first. Like, the first thing you do whenever you go in is play a tutorial. So it, like, it bullies that you sucks. into doing it. Yeah. 
So. Yeah, and like when you can't skip a tutorial, that bothers me. It's so but annoying. It also bothers me when it feels like a tutorial is like like if you you need to have a tutorial that makes it so it's part of the story and is important but at the same time doesn't feel like a tutorial it's super hard yeah, yeah but it's, it's super annoying mass effect did that get him out well. line to watch. get him out yeah. uh, I, breath I of the some... wild did that really well mm -hmm. they i mean the starting era the starting zone like it felt important and you were gaining new abilities and it's kind of like the building blocks for the rest of the game but it didn't feel tutorially to me i guess it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't dictating to you it was letting yeah it, it, it was showing and not telling yeah, yeah that's that's what it is it's like <laughs> third grade all over again so i have a sort of litany of things here that it pisses me off when i play games so i'll try to list them quickly and then move on i'm tired of exit screens of exit screens at all. If I tell the game that I don't want to play the game anymore, that game needs to stop. I don't want to, like, are you sure you want to? Like, fucking yes, I'm sure. If I hit exit, we're done. We're done. <laughs> it pisses me off that I have to spend that three seconds of my life telling you that, yes, actually, I'm sure I want to exit. Um, but that adds but Dan up. Says, it, but what if they're trying horrible. to... But what if they're trying to tell you to save before you exit? No, 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 no. Because games should either auto save or you should be keeping track of your save states. Or like it should save These days, and then yeah. quit when you quit. Like there's yeah. no reason for it to be a thing. Um, right. Or, or, or the other thing that pisses me off is exit screens that are that are hidden in menus. So like the Dark Souls exit screens, you have to go over to like the, the menu and then like click over and then go down and then exit. Or No Man's Sky is the worst. The exit for No, no Man's, Man's Sky, Sky is, is the, the worst. worst. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> no Man's the exit. Like get out of No Man's Sky is like hidden at the end of the universe. You actually have to play the whole game before it lets you leave. It's terrible. Well, Dark Souls, um, you're not actually supposed to leave, so that makes yeah. sense. And Ian and I were talking earlier about how about how some games were, well, especially again, Assassin's Creed. So sorry, Ubisoft, oh. but um, oh, not, 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 <laughs> no, not, sorry. I am, I'm not, not so sorry Ubisoft is like like bad open worlds uh, and exit screens and, uh, and like tutorials, tutorials not delivering tutorials. what they put in the game trailers. But oh. honestly, their games are actually pretty good. But. <laughs> what they do, what they like to do in their games is like, okay, so I want to exit. So in order to leave, you have to like leave the world. So you're in the animus. Then you're like, okay, I guess I'll exit the animus. So you exit the animus and then you're in like the real world. And you're like, okay, I guess I'll quit from here. So you quit the real world and then you go up to uh, the start menu. And then you're like, okay, I guess I'll leave from here. And then you go to the main menu of the screen and then you can actually <laughs> quit the game. Dude, yeah. that is the worst. It's like it's in like like the of quitting. Um, Second best beef is when games don't auto load from whatever your last save is on death. Do not ask me if I wish to continue. If I did not wish to continue, I would simply close the game. Like there's no point for you to ask me whether I want to continue or not. And if I wanted to load a, load a different save, then I would just load a different save. So that is something that that also uh, makes me angry. Dishonored Two does that. It's it, and it just slows me down, and I don't want to do it. Um, Stealth autofail missions, Ghost Recon mm. Wildlands again, Ubisoft, quit that shit. No one wants to play a game where you autofail on stealth unless it's a dedicated stealth, stealth game. Stealth game. Yeah, like Stealth Bastard or um, or or maybe perhaps uh, like a Splinter Cell or something. But even then, those games are smart enough to give the game mechanics to where you probably will fail if you're discovered, right? Like all the guards come running and they shoot at you, but they give you a chance but to you like can brute knock force. someone out with a pistol or yeah, or maybe you can brute force through a little section. So yep. there's no reason to have, um, no reason to have stealth auto fail. Don't do it, people. Um, yeah. Explicit, unskippable, shitty narratives. Narratives, <laughs> stories that I don't care skippable? about that you make unskippable. unskippable. Ah, Things that you can't skip, sorry. Unscopable. So, so this is another another ghost recon thing, or maybe like some of the Call of Duty is the stories that I did not at all care about. Don't I like if your game is about shooting people in cool ways and watching shit blow up, you don't need to tell me a story about like people being sad and losing their buddies, but then finding them, but then finding out that they're on the evil guy's team. Just we don't need to worry about that. Just make it really, <laughs> just make it really fun to play and blow shit up and stick to your guns, kind of. I guess I'm sort of Pat, saying the same thing. Stick that, to your guns. Uh... I guess I'm sort of saying the same thing that Will was saying, where it's like, 
if you have a game concept that's compelling, you don't like you don't have to make it an open world game. Like stick to what you're good at. Do yeah. a small yeah. thing really well. Don't don't add anything. quick time events. <laughs> um, and the last one is tiny invisible walls. Oh like my god! Things, boulders that you should be able to jump over, but you can't. Oh, uh, waist this high walls thing, that don't make any this sense. This is the thing that's been annoying the shit out of me with Horizon Zero Dawn, especially after playing uh, Breath of the Wild. Because in Breath of the Wild, you can climb everything. In Horizon Zero Dawn, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to jump on something and I can't jump on it. Jump on it. Final yeah. Fantasy Fifteen so, has some stuff like that too. It's like the the the, the thing I need is is there, and I can't. There's a fucking you like, can't do let me through and you you just can't you have to go like the long ass way around <laughs> yeah yeah so so i encountered this most recently in the talos principle which is actually a pretty um, like pretty respectable puzzle game. i like it um but there are there are some like tiny boulders that you can't jump over for no particular reason other than that if you could do it other than then, fuck you yeah it's, it's just <laughs> like that's fine if you want to have a barrier there Put up a, like a, a fence. Use a wall. Put up, put up an actual wall. Um, what was that vicious some, beast? Some some ankle high thing I can't sit over. It's the worst. Some vermicious canid. So, so we're gonna stop complaining for a minute and take a break here, and we'll allow your ears to sort of calm down from all that anger that happened. When we come whining. back, we'll yeah, so whining. angry. All that nerd rage. When we come back, we'll check in with our beer and talk about gaming heartbreaks. This is a very sad episode. So we'll yeah, be back in just really a second. Of of <laughs> we didn't think about that, I guess, did we? It's really yeah. sad. Welcome back to the Game Brew Podcast, episode 004. Uh, I'm your host, Ian Richard, and we're going to check in on our beers here. Um, I'd like to know first how your watermelon is treating you. So it's doing the opposite of growing on me, which I hate to say, but like I started drinking it, it was good. The second beer was like not as nice. And now this fourth beer that I'm having, I skip having number three because I just drank number three real quick. This fourth beer, I like, I'm kind of, um, I'm past it. It's not interesting anymore. So, if it were an IPA or a porter or something, I feel like I'd have a little bit more to latch on to, but it's just like I'm, I'm bored. Sculpting. So the beer is so bad that you're chugging it just to get rid of it and get it out of your house. <laughs> That's how bad, bad that is. It's just like you want to have one or two and then you know continue playing Frisbee. And I'm not playing Frisbee, and I'm on number four, so it's just not working for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how's the 1554 holding up? Mine's mine's doing well. I mean, like I said, I'm on a lot of medicine and other alcohol at the moment, so, which is not safe. Don't do that, kids. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not terrible. It's not something I don't think... It's not something that I think I will drink actively again unless somebody just happens to bring it to a party or something or we just have it. Uh, I would probably much more enjoy the watermelon or some sort of fruity thing, to be perfectly honest. I'm not a, a man beer dude guy. He's a fruity beer person. It's okay. You can be I fruity am. beer I want people. Strawberry. I'm at a point in my life where I know what I want, and I want strawberries in my beer. Oh, God. And mints on no my pillow. No guy ever. Don't tell your wife that. I know for a fact your <laughs> wife will murder you my if you wife, say that again. My wife drinks hard liquor, and I get like, like she loves scotch. And I have to have See, the mixed is, drinks because oh, I can't do scotch. I cannot do scotch. I love scotch. This is you why like I like Tamara. What? Do you like apple but it's, martinis? Yeah. But it's good because Will can apple go to the bar and be like, you know, I'll have one straight Lafrague on the rocks. Do you and guys I'll have, like? <laughs> uh, I'll have a Cosmopolitan. And yeah. everyone's like, oh, he's getting the Cosmopolitan for his wife. Yeah. Then yeah, I was going to say, like, do you like, guys mm-hmm. like, do you order your own thing and then switch? No, like, she <laughs> makes me order my own thing. <laughs> nice. Like, nice. she wants people to know how, how sissy her husband is yep. she's very supportive of my drinks i have a wonderful wife. <laughs> I, I, I support you and she's i'm not only saying that because she's like eight lifestyle. feet through that wall well that's that's love i think that is that's, do, that's it, do it yeah do what you want that's important you do you uh what what about the whiz bay <laughs> well i switched to the 1554 so uh, i switched uh, i switched to the whiz bang yeah yeah Dan, what do you think <laughs> Uh, it's, a uh, it's, it's good. Like it's, it's definitely lighter. Uh, well, well then the 1554, yeah. <laughs> um, but it says it's a hoppy blonde ale and it does not lie. 
uh it's like you can taste i can taste the hops um and it's definitely like a nice a nicer like a lighter color so it's not you know your standard ipa kind of it's an ale first of all so it's not super it's not super hoppy but it's like a hoppy ale uh, I've had four of these things. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't make any sense anymore. Chris, what did the uh, what did the whiz bang do for you? Uh, I mean, I liked it. It was uh, it was a nice it was a nice summery like springtime time beer. Nice. But I'm 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 in more of a a darker beer phase right now in my life, so <laughs> I'm kind of leaning more towards the fifteen fifty four. To fit the oh. to fit the mood of this podcast you yes know. very That's dark right. and a darker a beer for a it's a dark episode. and brooding beer for a dark and brooding <laughs> conversation speaking of our dark and brooding conversation let's move on to our gaming heartbreaks this is a topic that's devoted to the sad stuff that happens when you're playing games so um what's interesting is that we've broken into so there's only four of us this week we're without our uh alex writer sadly so so we've broken into two camps uh, as far as I can tell from what we've written. Two of us are finding that our heartbreaks happened back in the nostalgia-fueled eras of uh, the SNES and the N64, and two of us have gaming heartbreaks that happened more recently. And so, um, to me, that's kind of an interesting division. So I want to start with the recent heartbreaks, um, Dan and Chris. And specifically, I want to go with Chris, because yours are very much tied to a specific series. So what are what are the heartbreaks that you've experienced in gaming that are the most deeply felt? Well, actually, I, I want to say, first off, my, my most, like, I, I kind of have two things on my own. Uh, one is a game that was just a big disappointment, and another was something that actually happened inside of a game. So the game that was a big disappointment, that was a super, like, I was really hyped up for it, and I think a lot of people were at the time, too, was... Um, it was a Bethesda release called Brink, and it I was supposed that. to be, uh, yeah, it was supposed to be kind of like a, a Call of Duty, actually almost like a pre Overwatch Overwatch yeah, type game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and it looked really cool, and then I played it, and it was just, it just wasn't there. And I, I wonder if, if maybe Bethesda was, or I can't remember exactly who released that, but I know it was, it was a Beth, like under the Bethesda umbrella. Um, but I I can't remember who released it, but it was supposed to be such splash a big damage game, and it just developer. it just splash damage, yeah. It just wasn't. It just didn't have it. I don't know if you guys had the same experience with that game, but you know, I I never played it. It's interesting that you bring up Overwatch though, because it really, from what I'm reading about it, it seems like it was an Overwatch before its time, before people had really gotten into MOBAs to the point where they understood that a team-based game can really pull you in. I think it almost yes. seems like it was more of a culture thing than an actual design thing. It could have been, yeah. Was that the game that was based off of uh, the Disney Channel original movie with the inline skateboarder, the inline skaters? No, 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 not no. At all. This was a first-person no. team-based shooter. Uh, okay, all right. No, although that, that was been... an awesome movie. Uh, this was back in the time around 2011, 11. 12, 2011. This is back in the time where I remember, and, and don't ask me why, I just remember this game was out when I was making this decision that I decided I was not going to buy any more games until it had been out for a while and I could read reviews and see some gameplay online and see what it was like. So I never got into this game because by the that time was I would the have game. bought it. That was the game that made me do that. <laughs> that <laughs> it hurt you. It cut you deep. It hurt me. It hurt me. All right. So what was your um, other... Was the your other thing break? is, so again, back to Dark Souls, um, is the relationship that I developed with video game characters Solera of Astora and Sigmire of of Katarina um so in in Dark Souls you kind of start developing semi co-op relationships with NPCs within the game and they're just very like within a game that's so dark and so unforgiving they're two what you can call friends and um like sigmire you kind of start developing this thing you find out he's he's trying to save his daughter from something like he's just trying to find his daughter and you kind of while you're going on your quest you kind of keep happening upon him and i remember distinctly kind of spoiler alert here when he 
there is a point in the game where he just kind of throws himself into a pit and just starts trying to wreck shit. And I remember following him in there and dying and being just <laughs> so sad when I realized that Sigmar was dead and I came back, but he did not. Like, and I couldn't mm. take that back. Like, Dark Souls does not allow you to take that back. There's, there's no, there's no reset button. That sounds almost like I a was, Duncan moment from uh, Dragon Age. I was, yeah, I was yeah. just, I, I was so upset. Um, with Solaire, I was a lot more safe, and I actually kind of cheated and looked on tutorials because I didn't want the same thing to happen to him. I didn't Did you... want. To, I didn't want to lose him. I couldn't did lose you, him. Did you complete a Dark Souls playthrough and let Solaire die, or did you wait to complete your playthrough until you had gotten all the stuff done the where Solaire could actually live? I waited. Did not go hollow. I waited to make sure that I could make sure. I made positive that Solaire would not go hollow, and I wouldn't have to kill him Man. because I would have been more. Ups- I would. <laughs> I would rather not finish the game. Then have what? Solar go hollow. That's such a, that's <laughs> so cool that you did that because that's like a such a personal connection you make, like to a character. Yeah. In a like, game, I, like you were just like I I generally care about this. I my do. My question being. is my question is why? Like, what about those characters? Was it their connection to other characters in the game? Whether that's you know Sigmar's daughter or you, you know the chosen I, one. I I actually or don't like, even think it was any of that. I think it was a lot to do with the fact that I had spent so much time playing this game and knowing mm-hmm. that if I part of, part of it was if I I knew if I screwed it up I would not get a second chance. And the other part was these two characters in this game were the two rays of hope and light other than myself. <laughs> that <laughs> 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 that in this game that I mean they were my friends in an unfriendly place. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's good. All right, Dan, yeah. uh, talk to us about, Oh, are you sniffling? Chris, is that a little sniffle from you for Sigmeyer? No, no, shut, shut up. Shut up. No, 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 you're sniffling. Shut up. I'm oh, fine. <laughs> Dan, tell us about your um, <laughs> So mine's, mine's kind of like, I don't know. Mine's kind of interesting because it just, it's just one of those things that sticks with me over all this time uh because again it's like rockstar makes is really good at crafting like major like big stories like it involves a lot of characters has a lot of things involved with it um and uh epics red dead redemption i talked about that a few weeks ago or a while ago i think we talked a little bit about it and how it's a i really like that game have you guys played red dead redemption at all i haven't finished Mm -hmm. it but i i played probably half of it i never okay, even touched well, it okay I played, well i played the whole thing so. spoiler alert yeah it's fine for anyone who hasn't played um red dead redemption coming up so you spend most of the game trying to trying to hunt down like your your former like band of bad guys and getting redemption and getting redemption basically because you want to see your family and be safe with your family again your wife and your son and at the end of the game you finally do and like so you're with your you're with your wife and you're with your son yeah and all you've of a sudden, got you've got on this huge murder streak killing all these super bad dudes you're a murder like hobo burning down houses making sure yeah. that your family is safe you return yeah. home then, dusty weather beaten full of bullet holes yeah and you're like finally like okay everything's gonna be great and all of a sudden this guy comes up to your farm you're like oh what's this guy doing here and then he like starts shooting at you so you gotta kill him and then another guy comes up. He does the same thing. And you're like, hmm, something's not right. You tell your family to run away. And then you leave your barn so you can try and follow them. And then look, there's a posse of like 20 dudes led by the guy you were helping who works for the government before. And they all murder you. You're just you're just immediately, you like try and kill them, but you, it's impossible. You can't get out of it and your character dies. So you spent... Oh my gosh, you've spent so many hours as this person who's like gone through so much turmoil and so much strife and so many things just to get his family back. And then the person who has told you that they would get you set up and they were going to help you just double crosses you. And, and man, it just really gets you the, and then the thing that gets, 
and then the thing that gets me later though in like a good way is that at the tour like once that happens the game continues and you play as your son who then murders like you of course you know his name is jack and both his father and now his mother is also dead so he goes to find the guy who killed you and he goes and shoots him in the face like 19 times um or however many times you want to do it you play it so That's you can shoot him as many times as you want in the face <laughs> yeah I did it could 19, be once obviously. it could be you know it's like it, the end of uh inglorious bastards yeah oh yeah they shoot hitler so many times so many times <laughs> so many times but that's like i think that speaks to me as like a as like a gamer because it's like i spent so much time and this guy seemed like he was invincible are you do you do you walk away with like a, a bitter feeling about that dan like are you angry would you rather that there was a happy ending to that or are you are you satisfied in that someone who sowed so much destruction ultimately reaped what they sowed well, I think it's I think that the innate like humanness in me wants there to be like I want that happy ending. Like I want him to like like he got it like he got it back. He like made sure like his family he was safe coming. and that he was safe, but man, you you do that much stuff, it does come up with you. But it's just I wanna I always wanna think that there's, you know, that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that it gave it to you, like it gave it to you. But then it just took, took it, it away. away. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh. Um, so, so my gaming heartbreaks happened much earlier in my gaming career. Um, probably the biggest one for me was the death of the death of Eris in Final Fantasy VII. Um, and what really struck me with that death is that up up to then, every video game that I played when an important character dies they find a way to bring them back you know it's not the last time you see them you either go to a save state and you load it back up and change something and then they're fine or uh or or they come back later on in the game and they're like oh everybody's okay you know everybody saw it through but um final fantasy 7 again spoiler alert for those of you who haven't played through final fantasy 7 eris dies and she's dead oh, forever no. <laughs> what? and she doesn't come what? back and 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 the um just dealing with the finality of that as uh as a pre-adolescent at the time was was big for me losing someone at that point who was a character that had these relationships in the game with other characters that identified with was was it was meaningful for me we were also Um, quite young at that point yeah that was elementary school and we hadn't dealt with that before most I'm sure if I went back to and, and read that dialogue again, that it wouldn't be as compelling as I remember it being. But um, but at the time, it really that hit me pretty hard. Um, and it's not something that's super easy to understand either as a kid that when someone's gone, they're gone. So that was that was a pretty big one. The other one that I remember hitting me pretty hard was when I don't know if you guys remember this. Everybody played Chrono Trigger, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Not all the so, way through, but I've, I've okay. gotten to the point. So as soon as you get to the future, pretty soon after you get to the future, you bump into a Robo, and he's like this super lovable machine, sort of like a big Hero 6 kind of character, and he's showing you around the place trying to help you out, because that's what he's programmed to do, and you run into all of the other Robos, uh, other serial number Robos, and they're all huge assholes. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, you're defective, Robo. You're totally wrong about everything you think you're doing. And by the way, we don't accept you as one of our own. And also, we're just going to beat you up for no reason. Like, he gets super hardcore <laughs> bullied. And that was something that when I was that age again, that I felt like uh, that I identified with Robo and seeing him be put down that way was really hard because that's like all of your greatest fears, right? Is everyone thinking about you like this, this, this person is defective. They don't belong. We just need to get rid of him. You know, they beat him up and throw him down a trash chute is what happens in that scene. Yeah. Um, but, but then but he then, finds a group of true friends and heroes right. that he sticks with for the that's rest right. of his journey. Well, I think so that's, happy ending, that's so relatable for any adolescent kid. And back then, that's 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 that was kind of the target market. I can imagine myself as a middle schooler thinking back. That's a powerful and I think important message. 
yeah. that was told to yeah. do. That, that being different isn't bad. Yeah, no, it's I, not. Uh, that was, I'm kind that of surprised that, that that's that if like that is not something that I would have thought would have affected me so much, but now that you say it, it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um and it's funny because I never used Robo in my playthroughs. No, uh, really? He, yeah, no. he wasn't he wasn't one of the characters that I used, but that specific character arc was really like really hit home for me. That I like I don't remember anything about Luca or Luca, however you say it. I guess her mom has a thing in that I don't know, I don't remember, but <laughs> like I remember this the thing, frog the, the frog and Magus yeah, frog. stories, obviously. But yeah. but in terms of, you know, the the side ish characters, Robo was the one who really hit home with his story. So, uh, Will, what about you, man? Uh, I have two events that I would classify as a gaming heartbreak. One is game-related. The other is event-related. And to this day, it's one of the most disappointing experiences I've ever had. I uh, was in my parents' bathroom for some reason uh, when I was a kid, and I just happened to, like, open the closet door. And this was a couple of weeks before Christmas, and I found this nice gray and yellow and red box and it was the nintendo 64 and i was like oh fuck it yeah i know what i'm getting for christmas <laughs> and christmas morning i guess my parents noticed that the box had been moved i didn't get it it was like what? halfway it was like halfway oh. through the day christmas uh christmas day and I happened to go up to my room and my parents had hooked it up and plugged it all in and whatnot. So it was cool. But uh, that's nice. That's clever. Actually, the most disappointing part of that was that there was no surprise in because games are something I love and I enjoy them. That was such a big disappointment and a letdown because it's like, I'm getting this. And then there was no excitement. And that was a big deal console. So that was one. Uh, my gaming moment uh, to fall in line with the rest here was the end of spoilers in case. You haven't figured this out by now, okay? Uh, But spoilers, the end of the season one of The Walking Dead Telltale series with Clementine Clementine and Lee. Uh, That relationship was so powerful and so moving and so relatable because I think that's how you treat your best friends. Not, I don't view that relationship as a father-daughter relationship. I view that as a close friendship a very close and powerful friendship and uh i don't know i just found that very relatable at the end i'm really trying not to spoil it for anyone but uh you know like you guys spoil i would be spoil it do it it's so relatable i would be really sad if i had to shoot any of you guys in the face because you were going to turn into (laughs) (laughs) well i know for a fact you've threatened to shoot me in the face a couple of times so actually that is the only time i've ever actually cried for a video game and it was in that game that's the only time that's ever happened it was that powerful that's the only time that's a couple so 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 you did you did as uh, let's see because you don't actually take control of clementine right yeah you do you do you do okay yeah you do it's rough it's rough but you can choose not to right you can choose to just leave him there with the gun yes which i don't know i wouldn't like that's a that's a hard choice you know because i i did it like i didn't leave him there with the gun i i did it myself to make sure that it happened and that's like i did it too oh and it's just a that's a rough it's just a rough thing like and even though it's in a video game you spent six episodes five episodes episodes. six episodes five episodes you spend five episodes building this relationship where you're like oh i gotta make sure clementine's okay oh i gotta make sure i take care of clementine oh i gotta make sure clementine's fine i gotta make sure i've saved clementine and then at the end it's like clementine you gotta do this like you have yep. to i know i could yeah i could see your face right do you now think? and it's and you're doing the same thing i'm doing i'm like thinking about it it's killing me right now do you think that it would be as emotional if they didn't give you the option to not kill no i think the fact that no, you have not. to make the decision and you're in the driver's seat uh is so powerful and that's a simple thing yeah. you either click a button or you don't and that's so yeah, powerful I think and that's cool the whole time leading up to that like the last little bit of the game uh like like ian had said with eris i was like okay they're gonna figure something out lee's gonna be good 
It's going to be good. It's going to be <laughs> fine. And, you know, I cut his arm off. Spoiler. Cut his arm oh off. Gosh. I was like, oh, it's going to be fine. I cut his arm off. The disease didn't oh. get to it. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be so good. Much bad and stuff up until that moment, that until I clicked the button, I was like, there's, there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Fuck. There's no hope. <laughs> see, see, that's interesting because for me, when I was, I was playing that game, which I enjoyed to the fullest, it was just outstanding. Um, as soon as uh, you had to fight through that giant crowd of zombies to get into the building, I was like, "That's it, Lee's dead. It's over." So I, I start. I had. I guess I had like pre-mourned for him and let him go, and that moment didn't quite hit. Me. No, man. I held on. I'm American. I held on to hope. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys did you guys play the second season at all i didn't yes. did anybody else yeah because there's um uh duck's dad what's his face oh uh, i forget but I forget yeah what his, that's an excellent his name story is. arc as well not as powerful yeah, as because the first, there's but. again spoilers like in the in the whole at the end of the first game you assume that he dies and then the second game he actually like he comes back in like the first in like the first episode i think it is and it's like a big it's a big moment for Clementine as a character because she says like, "Oh, here's a," it's like, "Oh, it's someone who was around who knew Lee and like all this stuff," and uh, so, but that's that's what those Telltale the tell, the guys at Telltale games tell they're yeah. Telltale <laughs> beer <laughs> the guys at Telltale games are so good at telling tales like making stories crafting these moments like to get you to do oh stuff. my god I never thought about Telltale. Telling tales. Oh my god, my mind's blown. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. I never thought about that before, ever. Oh my god. All right, oh, we man. gotta we gotta get Will off the Nyquil right now. Uh, He's yeah. a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move on now to the news quiz section of our podcast, where I'll ask Dan Rotz and Chris Wright's uh, gaming questions from the gaming news this week. So each contestant will have a minute to answer up to six questions about the week's gaming news, and uh, whoever answers the most questions co- correctly uh, will win this week's prize, which is a uh, smooch from me. Okay. So- oh, dude. Oh, do I have to come Stop. to California? I'm not even kidding. I will do I have to come to California to get that, or are you going to come to me? Uh, you have to come. He's going to mail it to you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, We've yeah, mail get- it to me. <laughs> All right, so um, UPS so, or Dan, uh, whoever wins. So Chris is gonna go first, Fuck and uh, yeah. the timer begins now. The free DLC for this recently released horror game, originally scheduled to be released in the spring of 2017, has been delayed. Oh, uh, was that Resident Evil? That is Resident Evil Seven. That's correct. <sighs> this classic <laughs> RTX is now completely Starcraft. Free. Almost 20 years after the original release. That is correct. Praise the Sun is now a common refrain from the devotees of the Dark Souls series, but it's only present in the Souls games because Miyazaki smuggled it into them from this spiritual successor. Uh, Demon Souls. Ooh, that is correct. EA oh, announced shit. the next installment in this popular space shooting franchise this week. Wait, space say that again? Shooting, space shooting franchise by EA this week was announced. Uh, Titanfall? Oh, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. We're talking about Battlefront 2. All right. Last well, well, question. Text. Okay. This space RTS featuring space marines and orcs will launch on April 27th. Space marines and orcs? Oh, uh, Dawn of War 3. That is correct. Very nicely done, Chris. Okay, so that was <sighs> a bit of time. Uh, Chris answered four questions correctly. So four is the number to beat Dan. Dan, are you ready? I guess. Okay. Yeah, there is a minute up on the clock, and here we go. Specs for the new Xbox console, codenamed Blank, were leaked. The console features a buffed CPU and GPU, higher bandwidth, oh. and 4K optical drive. Scorpio? That is correct. This video game and video game hardware store has been suffering losses after it was revealed. GameStop. GameStop. Yes, that GameStop. Is correct. A series of breach. This is. Uh, Resinware is the name of a piece of malware and a bullet hell game released in April that locks down your complete computer unless you can do what? Oh, uh, uh, pay 2,000 bitcoins? That's incorrect. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. 2,000 bitcoins is so much. Score 200 million points. This super scary sequel is out today featuring a children of the corn esque experience where they'll have to run and hide in all kinds of gory locales. Oh, um, um, Outlast 2. 
That is correct. Marvel Comics has been receiving a lot of flack these days for revealing that our beloved Captain America has been a member of this villainous organization all along. Hydra. That is correct. What? This classic adventure game and dino shooter title has gone free to play on a browser near you. Oh, uh, uh, Tomb Raider. That is correct. Ah. Okay. So let's tally up the scores here. Chris answered oh. questions correctly and dan has answered one two three four five grand correctly so dan oh. is our Woo! winner this bum, week bum, i done got beat dan. <laughs> my first order of business as the uh as the new uh lord of questions is uh is uh beers for everybody beers all around everybody gets a beer Yay. <laughs> good job dan well done Okay, uh, so that was our news quiz. Thanks again for listening to the Game Brew podcast. You can uh, find us by looking us up on Facebook at the Game Brew, on Twitter at the Game Brew, on uh, basically everything at the Game Brew. Come check us out, download our podcast, share it with your friends. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Ian Richards signing off. Bye. Yeah, like we talked about positives and negatives. In we'll just find some sad music. <laughs> the, the walking away theme from the Hulk TV show. No, we'll play the uh, we'll play Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. Oh, oh. What? How does that one go? <laughs> it sounds just oh, like that. That's, that we could just cut that and go, and no one will know the difference. <laughs>